something else in the mix entirely where we know this other team has shown weaknesses so far and try and utilize that to our best strengths. And CIS Hope, they have said many times previously that they are the team that can adapt. They are flexible. They look at what the other team are doing and they respond accordingly. This is a prime time to show it because if they don't win this map, that goes out the window and they find themselves in a real brawl. And that's what we're hoping for, Des. We're hoping for not five maps. We're hoping for that tiebreaker final control map. Six maps, <laughs> final round, because that's the only way that you can justify this matchup and the only way you can pay it its true dividends. It's a real tough one. The Death said it. We've been saying it all along for the last couple of weeks. This is one of the closest, if not the closest, of all the quarterfinals we have got. Both of these teams have looked incredibly solid in their groups, respectively. August and Hungary, back in week one. When the Lost Crews and Immortal came in, we thought, oh no, that team's going to lose the win from its sails. But to give them full credit, as uh, Legday said Three, on the desk just a second ago, two, he's made a huge difference one, to this team. They are looking stronger one, than ever, but they are coming up against the fearful Russian bears, the CIS Hope, <laughs> with their banjos or whatever you want to call it. It's going to be scrappy. Well, CIS Hope, they themselves got themselves out onto the point. It seems there might be a little bit of technical difficulties, as evidenced by the May Ice Block on the Spawn Gate. That's all fine. It happened in the first series. Why shouldn't it happen in series number two? It's going to be the, the pause in quarterfinals, it feels. Every single one's going to have to have a pause at some point, else it just does not play out to the narrative. But we did just see towards the last seconds there, and it was the team that wasn't paused out. Unfixed was on that Reaper, and we spoke about it and saying on Shrine, we're expected to see that coming through. They go towards that. This is that three and a half base tank composition we keep on speaking about because Reaper, when he's in the front line mowing through tanks with his shots, he's getting all of that like health back off to all the shots that he's laying into the enemy team. He's basically a tank in his own right. Yeah, a bit of the half tank, quasi tank going on for him. And it worked out really well for CIS Hope last time they played this composition. So why change something that's not broken? Exactly. CIS Hope already planned to come out strong onto this map because I think Shrine is the more favorable round that they can get on the pile for this map anyway. So as we're taking a quick break, just a reminder of where these two teams sit in terms of groups. You have the second seed, CIS Hope, from Group B, and the third seed from Orglis and Hungary. They're from Group A. Little note about Orglis and Hungary. If they were to win this match and go up against British Hurricane, history, if it was to repeat itself, would be very good, and we could see them in the final, because they 4-0 the number one seed in their group, their best result of the entire season. And as a kind of counter to that, let's not forget they're coming into the final week in Week 5. They were sat in first. They dropped a third based off the results that we saw coming through. So these guys, you would argue, maybe a little bit of a fall from grace, one that you wouldn't necessarily expect. But of course, we're always speaking about that dark horse and angry titans and what they can deliver when they come to the fore. It's the same story with these guys. Four own British Hurricane is no easy feat, but they've shown that it can be done. They've shown they can beat the top team, arguably across the tournament, if you're excluding Eagle Gaming, I suppose you would say. So they've shown they've got this capacity to be able to take games like this away. This is almost like a proving point for these guys to say, we're here to show that we are a top tier team. We belong at the top of these tables. We belong in the finals. If they fall out today, well, there's going to be a lot of tears being shed, I imagine. If they, well, if they fall out today, they don't deserve anything. They don't belong. They don't <laughs> warrant anything themselves. But I'm glad you talked about CIS Hope versus Eagle Gaming because, yes, they did lose it. It was an incredibly close map. 2-1 scoreline. One of the only two draws we saw in this season. And it was both with CIS Hope. One against Eagle Gaming, and I believe the second one was against uh, Copenhagen Flames, I believe. Coming down to the village strategy is it's now going to start being called, I feel, for CIS Hope. We saw it in the last series when it came around to playing on village. Triple tank with the Junkrat. It's always the big go-to that we always see teams going towards. August and Hungary mixing things up a little bit, you might argue. If Facility chooses to stick with this Sombra, it would be a little bit surprising, although I'd expect them to turn towards the triple tank as well, given as said, that is basically the go-to. I'm surprised we're seeing a meal onto that road dog. I don't think you keep on that. Gonna be diva. Definitely a better diva player. And that's a cool matchup we got in here. Chow versus Emil. Now, Emil is one of these people who actually thinks one of his weak points is his over aggressive play style on Diva. That's not something we pegged him for. In fact, if you want to talk about aggressive divas, you look no further than Chow. The DPS main stuck in an off tank body. <laughs> Absolutely. And we say this about quite a few players that these divas have been soldier players or tracer players before, and all they want to do is just charge around and be free and kill people. What better hero to do that on and Diva in most cases, because the damage can be pretty absurd at the best of times. We well, can see Chow, he's already on that high ground position, as is the rest of August and Hungry, but they're starting to maybe see half in, half out what they're doing here. They're not showing their hand, keeping a lot of their players hidden. Now they're going to move them onto the high ground. Meanwhile, CIS Hope, they want to take this game by both horns and run it straight onto the point and get that early positional advantage. Yeah, so it's just like the other match as well, where the two teams kind of take a bit of time to really set themselves in place. However, CIS Hope with that cheeky cap away, August and Hungry not really showing up to this first fight. 
But from the high ground position, you can see Shaxx can rain down these grenades on the Junkrat facility, looking for the flanks on Sombra, the hacks try and weaken the front line of CIS Hope so Orcs can pepper them with more and more damage. The more time they take to do this, however, CIS Hope keep getting more percentage. Here's a Riptire, the first one of the game. Shax is going to be unleashing it onto the back line. Goes straight in, only finds main, but that should be enough for them to retake this against CIS Hope. More than enough because they're bringing down the tanks off the back of it as well. With the d mate gone, there is no defense matrix and they can charge in. Emil finding himself three final hits as well. That's the kind of stuff that we're used to seeing coming out of August and Hungary, despite their very, very quiet start to this map. Quiet start, but ramped up very quickly. 36% was the cutoff point for CIS Hope. August and Hungary, they got control of the point, and now it's ticking. How well would they fare on their defensive game, though? It's always the case when you're playing with multiple tanks that generally the team with the most tanks will tend to take the ground they want to take. It's then on the other team to fight back in facility. This is the kind of stuff he's been doing. He's constantly getting behind and landing big plays like this. Beautiful EMP to kick off a fight. Not much follow-up to be found, but here comes Emil and Epps to rack up the kills. That was enough for CIS Hope to turn around and go, nah, go next, we're just going to jump off the edge of the map. Just not worth it. When you know they've invested yeah. that much going into it with the facility all coming out, you just think, right, time for the hard reset. However, more out of August and Hungary from what we've seen before, they've got four ultimates online to blow in this next fight. We saw British Hurricane rotate ults very well. You're going to see exactly the same coming out of August and Hungary. Zilty was being a bit cheeky there, running up to the spawn point with CIS Hope and peppering them with bullets. Recalls back and now CIS Hope are running onto the high ground. They've got a coalescence to reinforce this push and they're all still hiding. See, August and Hungary need to drop down and begin the contest. Self-destruct, going into the back line, finds no one. Beautiful shields from Unfix to keep everyone alive. They did get the D-Mech on the Chow, and a trap Unfix in a stationary position is riled to be able to get himself killed. But a return shatter, and the damage is there from CIS Hope to maintain control of the point as August and Hungry are struggling yet again. Beautiful play, send it into the wall. It cannot be eaten from that position, and they're going to try and whittle down the rest of August and Hungry. The fight carries on going. Unfix on an incredibly high amount of charge, looking to fight through. There's just a lone junk around the other side of this point but two tanks to hold it down with no support and with no dps it's all on these two duo tanks to keep it alive and there we are they seem to have control the reinforcements from august and hungry are they coming back in to try it again great hills heal stacking through from the battle line from maine to keep those two frontline tanks in the zarya and the reinhardt alive Gotta say, for Unfix, he must have felt a bit weird there. Deja vu almost, because he killed Emil twice in that fight whilst he was running straight at him, just trying to keep the Zarya's attention. Here comes another big EMP out of facility. Not able to get the hack, and the protective barrier comes in to stop the Coalescence hack coming out and keeps that healing coming for CIS Hope. Bit of a flat EMP, shall we say, from facility. Not one of his best, as CIS Hope still have control. At 86% and counting, August and Hungry need that final push without the use of the EMP to make it work. Riptire, that's going to lead the charge for them. DPS option going high, going around, looking to find someone out of position, taken out of the sky by a Sharik flame strike, shutting down all that DPS coming out from the side of Aulis and Hungry and CIS Hope, 99%, overtime ticking down, no one's available, grab nearly there but unneeded, CIS Hope take round one on Nepal. Well handled by CIS then because knowing that that Sombra was coming through, that's always a bit of a worry point it feels to some teams because you're like, well, they get a hack onto the shield on the Ryan here. We lose our frontline shield and then we are left completely exposed. It's even scarier when you're playing this triple tank comp that wants to sit together on the point and an EMP can catch all of you. That's basically a guaranteed free wipe. But consistently they knew where Vizility was. And he, admittedly for Vizility, a couple of those EMPs probably not used at the most ideal time. It ended up costing them the round. Now they get to try something a bit different coming through onto Sanctum. It's so hard to say with those EMPs as well, whether it was Facility using it at the wrong time or whether it was his team not following up. I don't think you put the sole blame on the individual for that one, but as a team, they failed to either communicate unfixed, uh, sorry, Facility to hold onto that EMP or they failed to follow up with the damage. Like for like comps coming out here, except Immortal going towards that Mercy as opposed to the Lucy on the other side coming out of Aang. So a bit more mobility on the side of CIS Hope. Looking towards the dive threat potentially here, going in with the D.Va, with the Winston, with the Tracer, maybe that Lucio going on the follow through as well. But for August and Hungry, they're going to try and pile all this in into facility, get a Discord or on a key target, and melt him down with that soldier. Well, CIS Hope have taken the War of Attrition very seriously this time, forcing up onto the other half of the map where August and Hungry need to come out of. Yet again, the Earnest is being forced onto them to take the point, and August and Hungry are already playing catch up. They jump in last second, they don't allow the first cap, but that is so sloppy from August and Hungry. 
it's perfect for CIS Hope to capitalize on and get that first cap. Yeah, trying to dive onto two or three members and thinking, hey, we can fight for the point here, which rightly they could, but then you completely ignore the unfixers off to the side, 100% alone, and they basically get the free meltdown onto those members diving in. Emil was basically free sitting ult charge for unfix there. He's already at 80%. Equally, their visility, he's sat on 79, so not too far off himself either. Second pause already. It's a good series so far. We said one pause for each game, right? Yeah, they're, 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 they're too much. Having them taking the mickey right now. Uh, we'll allow them the second pause. Third times, it's a disrespect. I don't know what I'm <laughs> going to do afterwards. You don't want to see me start throwing hands at people. I'll be ready. I'll be here to catch them. I'll catch in a few minutes. It's okay. <laughs> oh, how wholesome. It's got to look out for you, dude. It's Absolutely. What we do. It's what we do. Anyway, the game going on so far at the moment. We see CIS Hope leading the series effectively by just having that one round win and already have control of the second map in the pile. So it's looking good for them at the moment. But of course, August and Hungary, still very early days and they of course can force out Shrine and take this black map still. It's not out of the realm of possibility. It's not. And to be fair, it was well played by CIS. You're looking at the other side for August and Hungary. They had the Zen, they had the Discord and they thought, right, Straight away, it's onto the soldier. Everyone jump on the soldier and kill him. They instead chose to dive onto the point because they didn't want CIS to get the free cap like we saw last time round, where they essentially got 36% for free. So they thought, we'll go and contest that instead. We can ignore the soldier for now. Bad idea, because Unfix was there like, oh, look, two free tanks for me. That's a lot of ult charge. Before you know it, it's at 80%. The point's been wiped out and CIS get the free cap. So a bit of a mistake being made by Orgs and Hungry to start it out. I would say somewhat reminiscent of what we saw last time because we already spoke a little bit about the Sombra. Didn't do too much for them last time. They could have switched it out and gone triple tank and tried to match up. We've seen Vizility play the Roadhog in the past. Could have been the choice. Instead, they chose to stick and ultimately didn't pay off for them. And of course, now they've got that foothold on the point. They can for allow Unfix to stay further back on the Soldier, play more defensively, and it gives them a great advantage because it's another objective for August and Hungry to take. Yet again, creates that split decision. Do I dive on the point? Do I dive on Unfix's Soldier? Either way, you're going to be splitting yourselves and that indecision could provide moments of opportunity for CIS Hope to capitalize on. It's quite appropriate that we come back into Kenzie and Shax on screen because these are two guys who've got a very keen eye on today. Shax has been regarded as the best tracer in Europe at the minute, but Kenzie in weeks four and five has only been getting better and better. Very keen to see how he matches up against him today. Currently got that pulse bomb on side, so he'll be looking for one of those key targets in the back. Immortal brings out his ultimate. Transcendence already being used, so not much going to happen there. I believe we just saw a boot from Aang taking a meal off the map. Vizility using his tack visor. Wasn't much to be found from there, but Unfix returns a kill. He seems to be the superior soldier whilst also retaining that tactical visor. So even despite Vizility not getting dropped down, they still get themselves forced back. And you've got to kind of give this over to the tanks on the side of CIS. Looking very in sync today. And in previous weeks, I've said Sharik and Unfixed. These are the guys to watch when they're going together. Today, it's all about Chow. It's all about Sharik. These guys are making it work. The sight lines that the tanks provide from CIS Hope here are fantastic. They can see both the spawn entrance, but also the opposite spawn entrance. They can feed that information to the team and dive appropriately onto it. Primal Rage being popped and Epps is already using that transcendence. Immediate retreat from Sharik. So he got exactly what he was looking for with that. Opens it up for a nice combination from CIS Hope. Sound Barrier being deployed as well as the attack buys, but immediate deletion from Emil. The micro missile shredding through unfixed self Destruct going onto the high ground area. We'll take out Tonic. That's unfortunate to miss out on the monkey. Kenzi being dropped by the Helix Rockets. And here's the tactical visor from Vizility. He's going for round number two. No kills to be found. I believe that self destruct cleared the field a little bit too much. But while this is all going on, 90% for CIS Hope. The retake about to come in. Someone needs to get the touch, but everyone else is too busy fighting. So they won't even complete the capture. Vizility taking down Sharik. It's still the same story. But all of us are hungry. They've got control of the point. Big play. So finally, we actually see Shaxx going in the kill feed as well, because the whole game so far has been Shax versus Kenzie off to the other side of the map where the action is actually happening. If you see either of them, chances are they are dueling against the other. They finally get involved, and you can see why Kenzie was tasked with keeping Shaxx quiet. He storms in and gets himself a couple of kills. Orgnus finally find their first fight win, but CIS have got 96% on the ticker. Takes a clean wipe from CIS, hope to take the round and take the map and go with that 1-0 series lead. How will CIS hope to do it though? Still remains to be seen and whether Orgs and Hungry have the tools to shut it down. Shax is sitting on that pulse bomb. So he's gonna have an option available, but he's still being pestered <laughs> by Kenzie. They're having these jewels and another pause comes out. Right, hands to be in front. Where do you want it? <laughs> So ideally somewhere and catch it, that would be a nice start. <laughs> but speaking of catching things, like I say, Kenzie and Shaxx constantly catching each other out as they're trying to go for the flank onto the enemy supports. Back and forth there, it's really bizarre to see 
Both of them engaged elsewhere, and it's not in the bat line because we've always commended Shax for his ability to get in the bat line. One versus two supports, and generally, if supports are dying in a 1v2 to a tracer, either there's question marks to put over the supports, or your tracer is just a god. In most cases, you know exactly which answer you would go for when Shax is involved. Well, I'm pretty sure their objective is to just deal with each other, so if they're dealing with each other isolated on the rest of the map, it truly is a solid 1v1. This is something that Shaq should be winning out if he's being pegged as that best tracer in EU when it is so such an isolated fight. However, it's not been the case. Kenzie, he's got the positional advantage playing around the interior and he's able to keep Shaq's away by playing around big health. Yeah, and seeing the big answer in that last fight for them was bringing down the tanks, especially Sharik once he fell. They were free to dive onto Unfixed. He fell out and all the damage disappeared. It goes Vizility with the Tack Visor. Double kill for Kenzie opens up the field. Immortal and Vizility, they have no ultimate usage on the map. This should be CIS Hopes to take as Tonic, he's going to return the favor. No more supports for CIS Hopes with that Primal Rage and Shaq can answer it again. So despite losing two crucial ultimates, Orbis and Hungry hold on to the point. But the cap has happened to CIS Hope. They're at 99%. Overtime's being forced out by Orbis and Hungry. They misstep here. They will lose everything. But thankfully, with the man advantage, they regain control of the point. It was a smart kind of tactical recap. And Kenzie even going in to contest the point just bought CIS Hope a few more seconds. They can afford a couple more fights here if they really want to, but they want to end it now. Unfix bringing out the attack visor himself. He's got a good sightline onto Immortal. No more mercy, no more resurrection. He's Forcing everyone back into the spawn room as well as Tonic playing conscious. He knows Winston can dive on him, shut down the eye line. Discord Orb immediately put on him the Orb of Harmony, trying to bring balance onto this monkey, but it can't balance Helix rockets to the face as CIS Hope regain control of the point and look for August and Hungry to try and get it back themselves. There's the cap. Who's going to be the person to touch and keep it alive for OAHN? Not there, Shaq. Getting the healing from Immortal. Here's Vizility's attack visor, but Chow is in his face, denying the maximum availability of it. And self-destruct will force them all into cowering and hiding as Tonic takes out D-Mech Chow. Orbis and Hungry, they're still fighting. They've turned this back around. They just need to get the cap to seal the deal. Unfix taking out the mech of a meal, and the environment will finish it off. 84%. This could go to a 99-99 stalemate. It absolutely could, and that's what CIS Hope would be looking for, I think. Again, more delays coming out of Kenzie. A little bit also out of aim, but did find himself going down there, so not the best stall coming out. Orgas and Hungry, a couple of questionable dives so far, but they are now in a fantastic situation to win this one out and force it through to the third round. This is huge. Goodbye, Main. And Vizility follows up with a kill onto the second support. CIS Hope have nothing to reinforce them. The tanks, the monkeys, they're flowing those hands, but it's Tonic taking out Sh Chow. Sharik denying Eps. The point is thoroughly controlled by Orgas and Hungry. Sharik doing his best to try Time again some control, it doesn't matter. We are going to the third round of Nepal. And what a scrappy one it's gonna be. We saw it earlier on before that first disconnect came through. We were going on to Shrine. That's where we are headed now. What did Unfix pick in that first instance? It was the Reaper. I fully expect to see the same kind of thing come through for this round as well. I gotta say, it's so back and forth so far. However, when Orcus and Hungry get it right, they consistently look stronger and more decisive than CIS do. And you were bang on the money with that one, Des. CIS Hope going to be rocking that triple tank Reaper composition. So 3.5 tank, shall we call it? We'll That's what I, with I like calling it that. It's good, yeah. August and Hungry, they're opting to go for something similar to what they had when they were playing on Village, which is running that Sombra, allowing Vizility to get those hacks off. And I think they're going to be relying on the main damage source of Shax on the Junkrat. This is almost a direct matchup once again, but they've really mixed things around because now Chow, the go-to D.Va guy, is currently sitting on the D on the uh, Zarya, sorry. I'm so used to saying Chow playing on the D.Va, you'd have to say that by default in a sense, but they're relying so much on a fixed here. Last time around, it was the Junkrat, it was the, sorry, Kenzie playing on the Trace that they relied on. Now they're relying on this Reaper to do the work for them. CIS Hope being very patient, not wanting to show their hand, but I think Orlix and Hungry have a good read on where they are. They jump down, using the amp it up to speed themselves onto the point, get that positional advantage while the rest of Orlix and Hungry are left out to the side. Kenzie's off at a good angle to get some hooks and try and get a pick. They're going to dive on him immediately. The point goes over to CIS Hope. Facility from the side, not enough. He's being unanswered at the moment. 140 HP, it's gonna go back up. The position still being held by CIS Hope, August and Hungry, waiting for the right opportunity to dive in. So much is to be on Vizility's EMP, and he just got it online, he got this so quick, but finds himself almost brought down, does not get dropped. Instead, we see main fall, the healing is gone. CIS should get wiped out here. Exactly, the EMP comes in and it cues the fireworks for August and Hungry to dive onto the point. They're gonna shut it down at around about 25%.
things. All on the Zillity this game, it feels. If he can get a couple of these big picks off, either onto the hacks, onto the shields, or whether it's a pick onto someone like Main, that is the win condition coming through for Orgus and Hungry. In fact, like they spoke about this in the last series, you should know the enemy's win condition, and it feels like Orgus and Hungry have got this one down to a T. Same pathing again for CIS hope this time. Hoping to have some more ultimates available. Whole Hog, Coalescence, Unfixed. Maybe could get his Death Blossom in this next fight. Good blocking from Shaq, keep everyone alive. Coalescence comes in, Riptire gonna drop down from somewhere. Shaq's looking for the answer. Sharik again with the Flame Strike. The second time this map alone he's done that. And now Unfixed. Pushing forward onto the point with the tanks ahead. Shaq's isolated for the good concussive mind to reposition himself to the high ground and well away from Unfixed Reaper is truly fantastic for him. Sound Barrier coming out, rejuvenates the fight. Shaq's abiding his time, but he's got Immortal with the healing to keep him there. He's still going to be outputting the damage as a meal back in the front line. Death Blossom nearly available. Got Shaq's has gone down. This is huge for CIS Hope as they de-mech a meal and will surely finish him off. And they've got three ultimates in their pocket for the next engagement. Most importantly, they're looking towards Unfixed with that Death Blossom as well. Of course, the requirement for that is that you erase a meal from the fight in the first place. It took him quite a while to do that in that last one. However, we've seen him a couple of times go a bit too aggressive, leave himself exposed. And it's, I guess it's more of a kind of cursing now that he's said to us. He thinks sometimes he's a bit too aggressive. Now we're starting to notice it more. Again, if he gets pulled out of the way, that's when Unfixed can go to town and really melt things down. Otherwise, they're looking towards one of these big tools coming out of someone like Sharik with the Earth Shatter to create the space that he needs to wipe out this team. Looking for a fatty shatty from Sharik. The team is split up. EMP comes in. He'll deny that option. We might not even see it. Visility cutting him down as there's a rip tire available for Shaq. Unfixed from the side. He's too low to commit with his Death Blossom. Needs some healing. Here comes the rip tire. Where's it going? Jumping around the back. Straight into Kenzie. He's going to blow it up with the whole hog as Chow taking out Shaq. This is the return for CIS Hope. The healing, take a breather. It's enough for Kenzie to stay alive for now, but he's still whistling down, getting pocketed by the Coalescence, but they need to move forward onto the point. So it's up to him to heal himself. Gets the hook onto Emil, brings him into the fight. Immediate boosters to get himself away. Unfixed has removed Tonic from the fight, so they're one tank down. Immortal gets to undo that work, bring him back into the fight, but the kill feed still coming up all blue for CIS Hope. If they can get any picks off here, they are guaranteed staggers. There is only 10% left on the clock. Unfixed has still got that Death Blossom. I want him to be really sneaky here. I want him to get a nice position, drop down and capitalize on the urgency of August and Hungry to really bring it home for them. Shaq's going over to his patented tracer, maybe try and turn this back around for them, but he's in the fight already. Looking for someone unfixed, getting a lot of attention. I think they're aware the Death Blossom is there for them. Kenzie getting the first kill. Facility, he's been removed from the fight. Sound Barrier comes out to sustain him. Emil's gone. Death Straight into the Transcendence and the self-destruct over the top. He still manages to find Immortal despite the Trans being up. So they got one kill, one support out. Shaq taking out Shaq with that pulse bomb unfixed again onto Emil as Shaq is dancing around trying to avoid Kenzie. He's found a Discord Lucio. He's diving straight out for him. Eng is out of the fight and he's still able to dance around. Where is CIS? Hope Focus, they're going to get taken down. It's all on main to shut him out of the fight. Overtime ticking down, no one on the point. CIS Hope take Nepal. Very, very close though. Again, small mistakes is what are costing them rounds here for August and Hungry. Facility, twice he came into the fight and died within the first three seconds. Those last two fights were essentially a five versus six, which is what cost them. I don't think we saw a solid rip tire coming out from Shaq's and that junk rap no. as well. Place it on Sharik. You can also place it on Kenzie as well for shutting it down. We're going to go to a break. This series is close as it can be. When we come back, we'll bring you map number two.
Welcome back to Overwatch Contenders Europe. My name's Trid. This is Dez. We're here to bring you the second quarter final of the day, and we're about to jump into map two, where CIS Hope are leading the series. That means it's Orglis and Hungary's map pick. Maybe that could give them the edge in this ever close game. But it's a series of small margins so far. Neither side has really looked like they are truly storming away with it, going to 2 1. You can kind of understand why that would be the case. Just small errors coming out of August and Hungary, it feels so far. Either mistimed dives or Vizility going a bit too deep on the Sombra. It really is small things that are costing them. They could very easily be ahead so far in this game, but Numbani is going to be the answer. That's what we're going to. That's what August have picked away. The look on your face already goes, why? You're giving CIS Hope a map they're undefeated on. They're 3-0 and on Numbani in the group stages, and you've had a... Uh, you've won one and you've lost one on Numbani. But you had a very good reason for this because you think you're more concerned about what someone on CIS Hope can bring out if it was to go to Hollywood. Yeah, Kenzie's Widowmaker. We haven't seen it yet so far today. And in fact, Kenzie overall has been pretty quiet so far today. But he's always the guy I've got an eye on who's dueling with Shats quite a lot. In fact, both tracers have been pretty quiet. Just completely cancelling each other out for the most part. But I think if you go to Hollywood, second point is entirely Kenzie's. We've seen Shats play the Widowmaker once or twice. Gotta say, it hasn't been as impressive as what we have seen coming out of Kenzie. So I'd understand why they want to go to a more vertical map like this one where you're not going to see so much of the Widowmaker because the sight lines aren't really there. Despite the verticality being pretty good for the Widowmaker in terms of playing in her favor, you just don't have the long ranges that you're looking for, the big open spaces like you find on Hollywood to really make it work. However, it does open up a lot of opportunities for things, and I'm not just saying this purely because we're seeing them hovered, things like the Farah. We have seen CIS run this a couple of times in the past on their first round of fence and then change over, and I know exactly what you're thinking when it comes to the defensive round for CIS Hope. I know that Aang hovering the Sombra means it's not going to be played, whether he falls into the trap just to anger me and goes for that torp <laughs> is going to be frustrating. However, we're getting to about 40 seconds, so he might still commit to the Sombra. I think he will, and this is very much so what we saw of old Sombra, like pre-patch uh, 1.20. It was about the more supportive style Sombra. You take it for the uh, health pack hacks, you sit on the point itself with the tanks, you get the constant ult charge coming through, and you just keep on rotating off EMPs. You can't do that anymore, but it's the fact and the utility of the denial that the Sombra brings, which is so useful. What you'll be looking for from Enk here is to find where Vazility is in the sky, hack him out of the sky, and just melt that bird while it's on the ground. We, we often joked about Enk's Torb, how it was unproductive <laughs> In certain rounds, and that CIS Hope would still win 5v6. I don't think the sixth pick matters that much. This is just like overcharged the CIS Hope on their defense here. Very keen to see how this works out because adaptation is a very key thing for every team, and this is definitely adaptation in the truest sense of the word. Does mean that CIS Hope won't be holding the high ground that most teams expect them to, and Facility is already poking his nose in. Well, we're going to have Farah jewels because Unfix is there. It's the Unfix main against the Immortal Facility on the Farah Mercy. And they're looking to contend the ground war rather than go for these aerial jewels. And so far, CIS hope they're keeping Orgus away from the point quite handedly. It's just a constant zoning threat, I think. And to be fair, props off to Chow as well. He's the one keeping Vizility quiet. Because this high in the air, there isn't really that much threat on towards the Farah. You're looking more for when he falls lower to maybe get some threat coming through from the from Aang and from Kenzie on the Sombra and Tracer, respectively. But August and Hungary, they acknowledge things aren't going to go fully the way they want to with the comp they had. They switch the Shaxx out to the Sombra instead of the Tracer. You mean the Soldier instead of the soldier Tracer? Soldier instead of the Tracer, yeah. I was going to say, Just a little bit confused there. They're going to go I'm for it. I'm glad you got, got you. me. I got, got you. Me. Something that Shaxx needs to get, though, is unfixed. And he's on that high ground position. He's already got monkeys in his face. Ooh. Immediately turns around to Kenzie. I don't think he's expecting the Helix Rockets to come out. Chow, on the other hand, he's taken their aerial fighter from the sky. As August and Hungry, they're missing facility. Unfixed, taking out Tonic and Shaxx. So the Farah, not to be beaten by her counter, will carry on dealing damage as Emil is a sitting duck for this explosive damage. Definitely Chow being the aggressive boy that we all thought he was here, getting up in the air and bringing Vizility down. Even with Immortal on the field, the heals weren't coming through to keep him alive. I think Immortal, his attention was divided elsewhere and it just split the team in half. So yeah, so whittled down already about two minutes from the clock of August and Hungry. Two minutes to go for a full hold on Numbani, which is something they've done quite often when they played this map. Looking at the ultimates available for them, Eng finally has that EMP available, and everyone else is starting to light up from the side of CIS Hope, while August and Hungry are trying to find some semblance of ult charge. Kenzie taking out Shax. Vizility hacked out of the sky, so he's going to have to put the pause button for now as Kenzie finds another kill on the Tracer. Unfixed. Moving around into a more advantageous position, but I think the rest of Orcus and Hungry know that this push is over. Yeah, very quiet start from Orglus. They just can't really seem to adapt to this triple DPS setup coming out of CIS Hope. And you say triple DPS, you often think Hurricane. 
In this case, they're surprising everyone by bringing it out. And a strange setup in that as well, because having unfixed um, playing on the on the Farah dictates that Main goes, a plus, goes across and plays on the Mercy instead. So they're really splitting this team apart, but it's working so well. This solo healer is doing work. Kenzie's been doing phenomenal amounts of work as well, shutting down Shaxx, forcing out an early resurrection from Immortal. This is not the way we would have predicted this duel to keep on going. But the high ground's being contested. Vizility's playing around the terrain, going up against Unfix. He's got a barrage available. Tonic jumping straight into that arc. He will get the Primal Rage out, self-destruct in a position. Beautiful concussive blast to move himself out of the range. The barrage itself coming onto the point. No one to be found, but Shax has removed Unfix from the field. Self-destruct in his face yet again, but it's an allied bomb as he moves himself out of position. Tonic taking out main, and now there's just one weak monkey being taken out. There's Vizility and the rest of Orgulus and Hungry will break through the CIS Hope defense and move on to the second stage. Took him almost three and a half minutes to do it though, so that will be a successful defense of CIS. They'll be happy with what returns they got from this. Now they're going to switch over to what we see as the kind of tried and tested standard defense coming out. Even the attack sometimes as well on Lumbani going towards the soldier, hybrid dive with the Mercy coming through to provide support. They're not going as deep as you usually expect a team to do when they capture that first point. You expect to see them right up to the bridge, right up to the underpass, and not allowing any team to get entrenched. Shax sneaking up behind him. He's one stealthy boy. Got the pulse bomb, throws it out, doesn't land it. Doesn't even find any damage. Wasted opportunity from the Shax man. But he's going to have to fall back to the rest of his team and see how hope. A little bit more anxious around their corners. Secret agent Shax fails his secret mission, as it were, in that case. Getting one of those supports would have been huge for them, but doesn't play out that way in the end. Looking towards Epps now with that Transcendence online. That's the big go button in a sense, and here it comes. Go button has been pressed, but where is the go? It looks like it's coming out from CIS Hope instead. The Shax will go on to Sharik. He's on the backside, <laughs> gets out a pistol whip. We're removing unfixed and main from the fight with a pulse bomb in his pocket. He sees Chow in front of him. The two tanks available for the kill. He takes out Sharik as well. This has been the Shaq show. I think he heard us talking about how he's being beaten by Kenzie. Like a, like a secret agent film, mate. You fail your first mission, then you want your redemption. You come back in and do it strong because getting two kills in that fight clears the streets for them to push through. This is very, very common to what you see in the second phase of Numbani, where it all comes down to a big fight around this second point, and then it all explodes around the third as the kind of desperate desperation from the teams comes through. First and second point are very vertical, so the comps will likely change it once we get towards the third, as that's quite flat and open. Shaq's got a high ground position. South the truck goes into the back line. Primal Rage already been popped to move him around. Emil taking out Kenzie from the fight before before it even begins, tack visors being mirrored by both teams, but it's unfixed, having to deal with the hands of the monkey, gets him on the last breath of the tack visor. Now a meal from a Discord or gonna be peppered down. The healing comes out immediately after the resurrection from Immortal. It's unfixed, still fighting around inside that bubble. He's getting attention from Winston, has to fall back and rely on his healers. There's only a Primal Rage monkey to keep him out of the fight, but they're moving back in. There's the stick he's been looking for. Shaxx removing Eng from the fight, and he's free to take out Main as well. Orglis and Hungry are surely going to force out stage three of Numbani. That's the Shaxx we're used to seeing, and surprise, surprise, when no Kenzie is on the field because he mistimed his recall and got caught out by the bomb. You saw him have all the freedom in the world to charge in and bring down those two supports and cripple the back line of CIS Hope. So Kenzie's been doing his job, as you can see. Once he disappears, things definitely change. Orcs and Hungry now with just over two minutes to push onto this final point. I'm going to mix things up just yet, but neither are CIS, are CIS Hope. Kenzie's definitely the grand inhibitor of Shaxx this game. <laughs> Orcs and Hungry moving around. They've got Attack Visor in their pocket, as well as the Valkyrie to force this fight out. We see the Lightning being traded. The alternating current isn't there as the Transcendence moves in. CIS Hope being sustained by that and forcing August and Hungry to whittle down more of their 145 time bank with facility on the back line. The transcendence is gone. This is the aggression from August and Hungry as they dive onto the back and it's Tonic. He's reaping the rewards of the dive. Shaq clears up main. They go back for the tank to get the payload in motion. Will they be able to buy enough time to stagger out a respawn? I don't think so. This is going to be some big progress for August and Hungry. This might be it, actually. If they can stagger this fight out, as you say correctly, and they've so far got both the tanks burnt down towards the end that even Kenzie fell. This could be big from Shaxx. Oh, I thought he was going to go for the Mercy, but chose not to. How about main? He's got your number today, my friend. That's the fourth time in a row he has brought him down. He's isolating it. He had to hide away from Unfix. Kenzie came in with a cleanup. Vizility on their hand with the Helix Rocket. Gets a kill. Self destructs being traded. Chow removed from the map. Oh, he won't get back in. Was that a capture from Emil? <laughs> it was. He dropped the bomb, but I actually think Sharik, I thought Sharik jumped off to jump back on after he got melted off the side. So to be fair, there was no one around to really get onto it. But it was just a very scrappy final fight. I think CIS taking that bad fight on the corner with their tanks. Probably should have backed away and left it and come back in for the final fight. But August and Hungry managed to complete with one minute left in the time bank. 
And that means that even if CIS Hope complete this map, we're going to see Numbani again. Full completion from one team. We need to see it from another to keep this dream alive on this map. CIS Hope, I don't think they were expecting that much aggression from Orglis and Hungry. Not on the second and third point, and to give it over to CIS, it was definitely a really good, solid defense on the first point. Now, Triple DPS worked wonders for them for the longest time. It just kind of fell apart once Orgus and Hungry figured it out and managed to get all the pieces into place where they needed them to be. Curious to see if they choose to do the same sort of thing that we often see out of CIS on the first run in Lombani. Farah is always their go-to, and it always seems to work because unfixed, we speak about this guy quite a lot, and we'll, or we did at least in the first few weeks. Then Kenzie has definitely been the focus in weeks four and five and seeing him step up. But for Unfixed, Farah has been one of his big go-tos. Week one, he rolled face with it when they came onto playing Ilios. This time round, he's been using it on Numbani. We saw it in the defensive round how well he was playing it. Now he's going to make it work on their attack. Worst case scenario for these guys is they find themselves completely stalled out because of Azility, he's playing on that soldier and we so commonly see teams play with the soldier on the high ground, stick a couple of tanks in front of him and it's a very, very tough shell to crack. And you leave one of the most independent tracers in the game, Shax, to do his job, work his magic and disrupt CIS hope. You would hope for that. But let's remember who he's coming up against. He's coming up against Kenzie, who so far has had his number in 95% of situations today. We saw what happened when Kenzie mex uh, messed up with that self-destruct last time around and got himself wow. caught. Otherwise, Shaq's definitely not looking like the free-roaming, free-spirited trace we've come to expect from this guy. The summer of love, 1960, it's all over. We're moving into the oppression of the 1980s. <laughs> and it's very unfortunate for Mr. Shaq. So let's see if he can redeem himself in a new wave of free love. As Shaq dies onto the back line, he's got a meal by himself in the high ground, and they're going to disposition the rest of August and Hungry as they jump onto the back. Shaq being kept in check by Kenzie. CIS Hope, they've already got a foothold on the point. Where's the retake from August and Hungry? They have no time to breathe as CIS Hope shuts them down before they can even breathe out that final bit of CO2. They can, but they're still managing to push back in here. They've got a couple of members hanging around, although with a D.Va, who's now on no HP, is now out of mech. There isn't going to be much to say for this one. That was really weird because CIS Hope when Sharik jumped across the left solo, I was like, uh, you're discorded, you're on your own. Orgus and Hungry equally were a bit confused. They were like, well, where's, where's the attack coming from right now? And as soon as they were all focused on towards Sharik, the rest of the team piled in, forced them off that high ground. And that was one of the most decisive first point catches I think I've ever seen. Really well executed by CIS Hope. August and Hungry have got all the work to do on this second point. Now this is the aggression we were looking for from August and Hungry, pushing them right up to the underpass and allowing that free movement of the payload into the second stage. This is where CIS Hope differs to August and Hungry. They're willing to take the fight to them and play the war of attrition. It's always just small mistakes from August and Hungry that's costing them so far. CIS are just playing the same game they always do. It's not particularly sharp. It's not particularly Impressive, you might say, in some cases, but they are making it work because August and Hungry are making these small mistakes that they can act on. I don't think the mistakes will be made from August and Hungry right then, as they no. have wiped CIS Hope from their mistakes, mainly taking out Main and Unfix, the DPS duo. I think they're going to shake it up now. You can see Unfix going onto the Soldier, Main onto the Zenyata. Going to come back at them, but now they've allowed August and Hungry to entrench themselves into the second phase. It's always funny how we speak about these highly flexible DPS players and say, this is where we think these guys are weak. On the side of Unfixed, his soldier is definitely not weak. We've seen him play this several times before. It has been excellent. But Shax has now got both supports again. He's been given freedom by Kenzie to make things happen. This is map one Shax versus map two Shax. Map two Shax, I'd take that every day of the week. The amount of times he's been able to assassinate CIS Hope supports and keep them out of the game and shut down any semblance of aggression from this CIS lineup. K Incredible K play. Kenzie's at this kind of tier four tracer at the minute where he's keeping the enemy tracer who's very good quiet but he's not doing what Shaxx is doing to his team. He's not getting in the back and melting down these supports. Well, with assistance from Tonic this time, he was able to do it again. And Shaxx, no one's paying attention to him. He thrives on miscommunication between back lines of teams. And when they can't coordinate, he finds those cracks and goes straight in there and takes them out. Xiao finally being the answer with the boosters removing from the fight. Self-destruct available for the Diva. He's looking to take out a meal, potentially remove him. Facility. Holding the defense matrix, the shutdown facilities, tack visor, but I can only last so long. They're moving up trying to get a better angle for him but ultimately the ultimate finds nothing CIS hope they haven't made any progress but they've not been pushed back to their spawn room sending the self-destruct up high over the corner no one to be found as they had enough time to move but unfixed taking out Epps Chow getting the DMEC onto a meal Main dies to another pulse bomb from Shaxx he's still able to assassinate despite the rest of his team falling apart and the payload moving ever closer to that final stage
And they finally managed to make it work. And for all I said about Kenzie not getting into the bat line, he was the one dealing with both of the tanks covering the supports in the back, whilst we had Eng and Unfix dealing with Chat as he dived onto them in the bat line. Shaq still manages to get one. In a one versus three situation, still manages to bring down key members of CIS Hope. That's just what level this guy is playing on. This is that tier five tracer I was going to speak about. Is the guy who can get in the bat line and make things happen, even in unfavorable situations. I think you mean tier one. We're moving it upwards as they get better, Des. All right, you say we'll go tier that way. five, you're expecting someone at plat level. All right, we'll go that he way. is definitely not that. It's Kenzie finally taking a page out of the Shaq's playbook, taking out Epps, forcing out the resurrection from Immortal, still giving him attention on the back line, unfixed. No one to find with his tactical visor. So now he's going to have to contend with Vazility just with his own aim. No hacks allowed. Tonic jumping over the high ground, forcing them out. Kenzie forcing Shaq's so far away from the team fight. It's those independent duels we expect. Vazility with the tank visor again, jumping over the payload. Chow's got Discord Orb on him. Emil taking out Main with that self-destruct. Gonna keep whittling him down this corridor of death as Shax gets the d -mech. Unfixed, isolated by himself. Only a matter of time until he dies as well. It's really funny seeing the difference in playstyles between the two Zens as well, because Epps, I think every single trans I've seen so far has been aggressive. It's been to push the team forward and to take ground that they would like to take back from CIS home. For Main, it's about keeping his team alive when they come under pressure from guys like Shax, from Tonic, from Emil when he jumps in there. Some really cute little micro moves coming out of Emil where he dives in, forces someone back, and then 180 turns and gets out before his boosters retire. They're changing tactics here. They're taking an alternate path this time to get onto the payload. I think August and Hungry are aware of it just because they had those forward scouts. They know that Shax is hiding in there, throws a pulse bomb into the back, no kills to be found. Kenzie with the recall gets held back, throws out a pulse bomb of his own into the shield. Brown Rage Winston knocking everyone for another round. He's going to jump in and away back to his team. Now, CIS Hope can get on that payload, start getting it in motion and unfix. He can open this up and enjoy that target rich environment, assuming they get the right picks to get this going. Self destruct, can he capitalize on the chaos? Emil running around the back, isolating himself, but they've got Tonic to give that aggression. Facility popping his own tactical visor, using it already. Shaq winning that duel. Here we go, Discord off into oh. the transcendence. Unfix shut down as Shaq takes out main again and Eng, he's found the support duo for about the fifth time this map. Probably more than fifth as well, to be honest. That's the first time I've seen Epps use the Transcendence defensively, but then suddenly turns it into the aggressive Transcendence towards the latter half. You look at any time they're using it, he's in the front line, making sure the tanks are behind him, they're fully healed up, and he's soaking up that damage, which of course he prevents because the, the Zenyatta is invulnerable during his ultimate. We're getting close to that point now where they're going to match the time allowed of August and Hungry. They've got about 45 seconds to go until they match it. Anything else, they would have lost moving into a potential second phase. That is on the assumption they even complete this map because they're struggling to get round the s -bend. Yeah, Sharik had to kind of bail away there because he was so low. Going to have to get himself healed up by Eng before they try and do this again. But Emil, got to give it over to him again. He keeps on being the guy who charges him, makes a quick swerve away, and keeps himself, you know, as a distractor in a sense. Doesn't have to play defensively because the rest of his team are playing it so well. They're moving in for the fight. Lightning being traded across the screen. Xiao going to force out that self-destruct early. Might get hit on the back end of that unfixed with the Helix Rockets onto Shaq. Knows Vazility is pulling attack fires with his own, but he's standing behind a bubble. He can't get hit just as well. Needs another 20% to get his going as he pumps into the Discord. There it is. Diva with the DMAC. Attack fires are available. Who can shut this down if he opens it up now? Epps on the back line. Doesn't even need it. No healing coming in enough to survive that as a mortal. Oh! Support. He jumps and shoots the Rockets at his feet as Shaq will be buried like a doormat. And now unfixed, roaming around the payload, escorted in for CIS Hope. We're doing them, Barney, all over again. Unfixed, final round of play there on that soldier was flawless. Holding onto the ultimate at the perfect time, catching out Shax. That's not always easy when a, when a tracer directly dies right in front of your face, but quite aptly, instant response. Jump up, he lifts the ground, dead. End of story. So now we don't really have much time on either side. A minute apiece, a minute and 19 for August, if you want to be precise. And who held up better on the first point defense trade? It was CIS Hope. However, they're the ones attacking first. It's going to be a repeat of what we saw earlier on. Let's hope they can have similar success. Capitalize on the confusion, shall we say, from August and Hungry. You correctly said they weren't quite sure what they were doing. Had to give up that high ground position. And when they went to try and gather their senses and force back onto the point, the brakes, they just never got pressed by CAS Hope. They hit the accelerator by mistake and floored it to 70 on the motorway. It was quite funny because Shank was essentially the guy forcing them all into the piranha pit. And as soon as they dropped, there was Kenzie waiting. A couple of other members were there as well to catch these supports. Like, yes, thank you very much. We will take their lives as they are here in front of us. 
Nice tasty meal for those guys. Got them the first point very quickly. I think it was about a 40 second capture for CIS and a three and a half minute one for Augler. So this definitely plays into CIS's favor. However, 19 seconds, that's probably two thirds of a fight worth that you've got on side. It's your favorite, Des. We're looking at a quad tank from CIS Hope coming out on Numbani point A. And to be honest, when it comes down to the wire, a lot of these teams are falling back onto the quad tank composition. But we can see sometimes this does take a little bit of ramp up time to get those ultimates online. They're just going to try and force their way into the point here and force August to come to them. But they've got this soldier on the high ground that can sit there forever. They've got the res coming out of Immortal. There is no res for CIS Hope. They've got to make it work essentially in this first attack. But they all have to go through the car wash of Tonic's Lightning, get themselves a nice wash of damage. But Shaq's already getting the DMEG on the Chow. One tank down in a crucial quad tank composition. They've got positional advantage on the point. They're fighting off the flies of August and Hungry as they jump in. Shaq with the recall. Emil removing unfixed. There's a nice hook from Kenzie. Not enough to level the playing field as the rest of them are retreating back into the defensive area. 15 seconds remaining. They've killed any attempt at a second push. They have to get on it right now and opening up kills onto a meal, but then having something taken back from main. You've lost Shari. This is all over. They're not going to be able to get in it. If they manage to cap this, it is going to be sloppy as hell. But Chow, DMX, Discord Orb on him. Shaq going to get him with the pistol whip onto Ang. Finishes him off as Kenzie. He's got to take a breather if he wants to sustain himself. Unfixed. On the tracer, removed from the fight. Overtime, willing down. Will there be a last second stagger? No one gets onto the point. Full hold for August and Hungry. I can see the intent that CIS had there. The plan was to get everyone together, stay together, and Shax will find it very hard to assassinate members. But in their attempt to try and clear away members of the opposing team, found Shax with the opportunity to get in the back and make things work. What I found really funny was when he charged in front of Kenzie, straight away without any kind of aggression from Kenzie, he was like, right, rewind, quick. I do not want to get hooked here. <laughs> His aim there was to stay alive and just keep on peppering them down, and he did that brilliantly. Because there was no capture there, Des, CIS Hope can do CIS Hope things, and they can tie on the Barney and that will be the third tie of contenders, all <laughs> for CIS Hope. And we go into the half with a 1-0 scoreline. That is setting things up nicely to potentially force out that final and sixth control map. Could you imagine if it goes all the way to six? I'm hoping. I'm and praying. Ilios, where both teams have a 100% win ratio. Ilios or Oasis. It could be, yeah, they get to pick the fifth one. That's very true. Not forced onto Oasis here in the quarterfinals. Still. We've seen what they could do with this last time. Have Orglis and Hungary found the answer? The answer so far appears to be no. They haven't changed up <laughs> what they did last time. They're going for the same, the tried and tested. Guys, it only took us three and a half minutes. If we go by that understanding of it took us three and a half minutes to figure it out, we can get it right first time, right? Well, Emil, right? Emil kind of said to me that he wants to go to the sixth map and go to round three of whatever the final map will be. Maybe this is his way of trying to guarantee that happening going in for a 1-0 scoreline to halftime. One minute 10 on the clock and the Rockets are already firing facility and unfixed. A little bit more patient than what we saw from CIS Hope on their offense, but still need to hit it and get it done in one minute flat. Are there going to be more memes later about Eng playing Sombra instead of the Torb, do you reckon? Potentially, but it's not as <laughs> annoying as when he plays Torb. Shaq's already on the point. He's got half of the capture already because they slipped. They blinked. They only need to get 33%. They can't allow someone to stealth cap like that. And Kenzie now having to play on that low ground. Fighting into that duel with Shaq, getting rained on from above by Rocket. A lot of attention being brought onto him. He had the recall available. Sharik on the Winston has his number. He's got HP. He's taken out Shaq. That's one crucial part of the defense of August and Hungry missing. The offense is suffering. CIS hope they could potentially hold this. 20 seconds remaining. August and Hungry know if they pull back now, they can have one more coordinated push. And Shaq's moved out very quickly. He is indeed a tracer. They move pretty quickly, believe it or not, Trid. So. Getting themselves back in. They're going to have ultimates on the field to play with. Immortal has got hold of that Valkyrie. And Vizility is so close to that barrage. This could be big. Nearly there. Two more percent. Three seconds remaining. Someone has to touch and they cannot let go. In the face of him, Vizility oh, removed from the fight. The resurrection was already used on Epps. No barrage for this fight whatsoever. They're going to have to wait for the respawn from the spawn room. And CIS Hope are dominating the kill feed. August and Hungry can't find a foot to step on. Who is the last remaining person? Of course, it's going to be Shax. He's been hacked. The barrage from Unfix comes out. Overtime whittles down. We're going to have a tie on them, Barney. And we're going into the half with a 1-0 score. Line. Of all teams to do it, CIS Hope. <laughs> Who else would you call on to do it as well? And to be fair, I think this actually epitomizes just how close it is. Both of them going for the full hold on the first point defense, both with pretty convincing attacks. 
you, you be an idiot to try and call this third map because it is just that close right now. And that's what we anticipated coming into this series. I was stupid enough to do it last night. And people saw. <laughs> I said that CIS Hope would win. You said flame you if you got it wrong. Flame me if I get it wrong. But currently, it's in my advantage. 1-0 lead going into the half. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back from that, our analysts are going to break down the action so far. You do not want to miss this series.